Since the full reveal of Nintendo Switch Online, many users have found the service to be a bit lackluster. After all, a service Nintendo had free for years was suddenly costing money, and unfortunately for most people, the additional goodies didn't give them an incentive to pay up. So what has Nintendo Switch Online brought to the table in 2019? Is the service mostly the same, or has Nintendo finally redeemed itself with its new subscription model? Let's jump in. When you sign up for Nintendo Switch Online today, you immediately obtain access to 20 different SNES games and 40 NES games, with some special variations mixed in. Along with that, you get cloud saves on specific titles, the ability to play online games, a special smartphone app, and exclusive offers. This is all for $19.99 per year for an individual plan, or $34.99 a year for a family plan of up to 8 members. At first glance, that sounds like a pretty good deal. It's not difficult to figure out that the 70 games alone more than make up for the price. But despite this one feature Nintendo has done well, Nintendo Switch Online still has quite a few problems. First, the cloud saves have been quite the topic since day one, and it doesn't look like Nintendo plans to remedy this anytime soon. Since cloud saves are limited to specific games, players may not even have the option to use them in titles that they care about. Smash hits such as Splatoon 2, Pokemon Let's Go, and even the upcoming Pokemon Sword and Shield don't support cloud saves. This is likely an effort to prevent cheating, but the lack of this feature on such titles is still disappointing for many. Secondly, keeping voice chat locked behind a smartphone app is off-putting to most people. Xbox and PlayStation players are used to having voice chat in the system itself. I'm not sure if it's a processing power issue, but nobody wants to download a completely new app just to talk to people on Switch. And what's even more strange is that you can use voice chat in-game in different titles, so there's really no reason why games like Splatoon couldn't have in-game chat. So at this point, having a dedicated smartphone application is just a confusing decision from Nintendo. So Nintendo is offering this smartphone application that a good amount of their subscribers are just not using. Lastly, the exclusive offers on Nintendo Switch have been a little lackluster. For comparison, Microsoft and Sony offer monthly sales for select games for their subscribers. Nintendo, however, offers special classic controllers, a free online Tetris game, and a couple of exclusive items for Splatoon 2. These offers aren't really anything special and don't add much to the membership. The controllers are a cool idea, and Tetris 99 is a fantastic game, but I'm sure most players thought of something else when Nintendo announced special offers for Nintendo Switch Online members. Despite this, the biggest assumption when Nintendo announced the online subscription model was that the online stability would increase. However, when playing Nintendo games online, there's no clear improvements. All of Nintendo's first-party games suffer from connection issues, and it's a shame that players have to pay for this experience now. Matches in Mario Kart and Splatoon disconnect fairly often, and Smash Bros. Ultimate is something completely unplayable at times. I'm not expecting a perfect play session every time, but I do expect there to be some sort of improvement in quality when I'm paying for a service. It's simply disappointing that Nintendo still hasn't quite learned how to make their online service work. Of course, it's not like the service has nothing going for it. As I mentioned earlier, Nintendo Switch Online comes with almost 70 free games, and they make the service worth it on their own. Tetris 99 is the only battle a Royale game that has ever grabbed my attention for more than five minutes. It's a great online game for people who love to stay on their toes and think fast. Additionally, I get to play some of my favorite games like Dr. Mario, A Link to the Past, and Super Mario Bros. 3. And it's great checking out SNES games and NES games that I had never played before. Without Nintendo Switch Online, I never would have gotten the chance to experience these titles. While some of the features of Nintendo Switch Online have me scratching my head, some of the free games make the service worth it. So, the final verdict is that NSO is still rough around the edges. At first glance, the value is enticing. There are a ton of games available to you immediately when you begin your subscription. However, this value alone is not enough for many. An online service is intended to improve the system's online play and capabilities, and NSO still has a long way to go in this regard. In short, Nintendo still needs to work on its cloud saves, online stability, making the mobile app worth downloading, and creating enticing special offers that bring in more subscribers. Until it does, this service remains a hard sell for many gamers. Thanks a lot for watching guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Are you a Nintendo Switch Online subscriber? Let me know and I'll talk to you guys later. Wow.